Hello to my friends and family and welcome to my YouTube channel entitled Jim's 5am Club. I'm down here at the banks of the Parramatta River and as you can see it's absolutely rushing and just overflowing with floodwaters here. I'm at the uh, causeway here at the Parramatta Weir and as you can see it's just surging. I just can't believe how much water is being pushed down this river on this very very wet day where we actually uh, woke to the news today of a couple of fatalities. A mother and her son washed into the river um, at Wentworthville. Very, very sad. But uh, hopefully this is the last of the big wet and tomorrow promises to be a, a little drier than what it's been all week. It's just raining at the moment so I'll just pop the umbrella up. But what I want to do is just go through another book summary. And the book summary that I'll go through today is entitled The Millionaire Fast Lane by M.J. DeMarco. It's a book which will, uh, I guess, push us and um, stir us up a bit in terms of how wealth is created and how, according to the author, there are three main lanes, three ways, three roads in, in terms of how we can, um, I guess, uh, push along or go along in order to build wealth. So um, I'll just go down a bit more and just get another little angle so we can continue this book summary. But as I say, I'm just uh, overwhelmed by how much water is being pushed along the river here. And uh, as you can see, that's the ferry, the ferry uh, wharf on the Parramatta River, which is underwater, as you can see. And uh, I don't think I've seen it this high for a long, long time. So let me just get set here with my notes. And uh, the author kicks off the book here with a quote where he says that the path for wealth creation is sometimes camouflaged from our view. Just like the footpaths here and the roads here are camouflaged from our view by the waters, the flood waters. So too, the path to, um, um, to wealth creation is also hidden from view from many people. But the author reminds us in this book that there are shortcuts that can be found. But, uh, and you don't need to take the road less traveled. There are ways and means of getting uh, ahead in life without having to uh, go and take the road that everybody else takes. But the risk is, and the warning is, that if you do take a shortcut, you could end up uh, in disaster. But by the same token, if you take the slow road, you could end up um, on a winding road which will never get you to where you want to get to. So a couple of things to contemplate and I guess each and every one of us need to decide which road we're going to take and whether or not the risks are worth it. But uh, this here is a great metaphor, a, gr a great um, analogy in terms of the uh, opportunity and the risks and pain that each people face in their endeavour to get to get the, where they want to get to 
in their life's mission. So what more can we talk about in this book here? Um, the bottom line, according to the author, is that we all have our own fate. We all got it. We've all got our own path. We've all got our own stream to follow. And um, I guess we've seen it time and time again. You know, many times I've been to the entrance and you see just lines and lines of people fishing. They've all got their lines in the water and yet you'll get one or two people catching a few fish and nobody else getting a bite. So we all need to have a crack at life and uh, sometimes being too conservative may lead to mediocrity. So uh, each of us have a path to take, as I said, each of us have our own fate. Each of us are going to live our own past, our own present and our own future. So we all have our own calling and we need to try and do whatever we can do to get the, better, the best results we can achieve. So uh, the author goes on to say that each of us will make choices in life and those choices will ultimately determine our trajectory or where we end up. And um, the choices that I make may be different to the choices that you make and uh, the outcomes may be very, very different as well. But um, at the end of the day, uh, those choices are ours. Our future is ours. And um, we are invited to do whatever we need to do to make the most of the opportunities that are available to us. So the, the author in this book basically details that there are three main ways, three main roads, three main paths that can get us to our destination. And as children, we've heard about the story of the hare and the tortoise, the tortoise where the hare takes the fast road and basically wastes opportunity and the tortoise takes the slow road and eventually gets there. So what this book is all about is examining the different paths that one can take to getting to their destination and each person being accountable, responsible for the path that they take um, in order to um, lead them to their particular desired outcome. So in terms of the paths that we have available to us, according to the author, uh, the author reminds us here and informs us that there is a sidewalk. And the sidewalk is um, one way, one road, or one um, avenue that people can take to achieve their outcomes in life. But the sidewalk, sidewalk is the path that is most travelled, that is most taken. But it's the path where we spend more than we actually save. It's the easy path. It's the easy way that people take where they seek um, immediate satisfaction of their wants and needs. And it's a path, I guess, that leads to most people's destruction because they never get to accumulate savings. They never get to get to where they want to get to because it's, it's a slow way. It's a slow meandering way that um, basically uh, brings them apart and brings them down because of this need to satisfy our wants and needs immediately without thinking about tomorrow, without thinking about the next day. So the sideway, the sidewalk path is one that can uh, 
be taken, I guess, by most people. It's the safe way, but it's the, the way that, I guess, doesn't lead to the desired outcome. It's the path that will give the wonderful experiences. It's the path that will allow you to see the world, to do lots and lots of things. Uh, but it's not necessarily the path that's going to give you the greatest joys and the greatest returns on your investment. Because what happens is the people who take the sidewalk, according to the analogies used in this book, are the ones who basically sell their tomorrows in order to satisfy their immediate needs and their, and their uh, immediate nows. They're the people who put faith in politicians to change the system. They're the ones who are most vocal when it comes election time, hoping that the new party, that the uh, fat boy uh, Kellys and Palmers will solve their, their problems and create magic so that they can live a better life. But alas, we all know that regardless of which political system is in power, and my mother used to remind me about this all the time, she goes, son, don't bother worrying about who's in power because regardless of who wins the election, you will need to work hard, you will need to be innovative, you will need to, to, to take risks, you will need to pay taxes, and you will have just as many challenges now and then as regardless of who's in power. So just focus on yourself and do what you need to do in order to achieve your outcomes and don't put too much faith in politics, don't put too much faith in politicians, don't put too much faith in political systems because you'll end up blaming everybody else because you'll be depending on everybody else and you'll never get to where you want to be. Because the people who take the sidewalk are the ones who always blame the others, who always depend on the others and always blame them or they, the they's in our lives, the them's in our lives for our lack of achievement. We, are, we need to understand that the slow lane is very time dependent. And time doesn't necessarily guarantee that you get to where you need to get to. Um, it does work for some. It does work for some, but the, the, the some that it works for are the ones who are lucky. They marry into money, they win the lottery, um, they get inheritance from their parents or from their grandparents. But this slow lane also means that you're time dependent and you end up spending and uh, investing the five days of your week, your Mondays to Fridays, in order to achieve your Saturdays and Sundays. It's the people who, thank God it's Friday, um, spend all their time and all their money in order to get to the weekend. But we need to know that there are other ways of getting there. So the first lane, the first road to uh, financial independence is the slow lane. And as we're saying, you may get there, but it'll probably be um, a fluke more, more so than good management. Um, the important thing, I guess, to come out of this book is to understand that, um, that, the, that wealth is best lived in the prime of your life not in the twilight. So the slow laners, according to this book, 
um, the people who um, who are not necessarily the ones who uh, walk the footpath, but the ones who take the slow lane. Now, they're the ones, once again, who um, depend on time to get to where they want to get to. But there is a price that we need to pay, and it's something we need to understand, that wealth is best lived and best enjoyed in the prime of your life and not in the twilight. So once again, the warning is um, that there are people who um, will take the slow road, will take the slow lane, according to this author, and will invest, will save, will take their time, will be like the tortoises, and um, slowly build up their savings. But the risk is that you will waste many of your good years uh, depending on compound interests depending on trying to get to where you want to get to and once you get there you'll realize that you're far too old to enjoy and make the most of it my uncle arthur papadopoulos built himself a yacht a 66 67 foot yacht that was absolutely magnificent but later on in life, he said, look, I really wanted to sail around the world. But I've realized that now that I've hit my 60s, now that I've hit my 70s, I really don't have any time left. I've run out of time. And that's an example of what happens when you get caught up in the slow lane, when you get caught up in the philosophy that in order to become wealthy, you need to invest and spend all your life getting there. The slow laners may get there, but, th but they may get there with tremendous um, regrets because what they're doing is they're tr trading time for money. They're the one day hopers. They're, they're the ones who, um, who uh, give up their Saturdays or their Mondays to Fridays in order to have their Saturdays and Sundays, their two days of freedom. So let me summarise again. We've got the people who take the sidewalk, who are the ones who blow their money and spend all their time um, basically living a life of indulgence and spend more than what they say. Then you've got the slow laners, the people who get in the slow lane who believe that you know, through compound interest, through buying a house, through slowly paying off the mortgage, that one day they'll have enough money to retire and to enjoy their retirement, knowing that in some cases it may take their whole lives, it may take all their time to get to their final destination and they get there and there's nothing left, there's, nothing, there's no energy left in the tank. You know, you're too old to travel. You're too old to socialize. You know, you've been saving your pennies all your life and you never get an opportunity to make friendships. You never get an opportunity to spend time uh, with your friends and family because you've been spending time indoors, um, saving your money, as I said, saving your pennies and not building a network of people and friends and not having as many shared experiences. So the key point of this book is to get and to consider the advantages of being in the fast lane. So the author here says that every day can be a Saturday. Every day can be life in the fast lane where you don't have to waste your time. You don't have to spend your time going slowly because we're not guaranteed that we're going to live three score and ten. We're not going to get to a retirement age. Take Shane Warne, for example. Um, you know, he, he died at 52. How many people do we know in our lives who never quite get to that retirement age? So there's always a risk, as we're saying, according to this author, that you spend or you, you save your, your pennies 
you take your time, hoping that you'll get to a time where you can retire. But when you get there, as we said, it's too late. You can't enjoy it, or you may never ever get there at all. So the fast laners are the people who decide early in their lives, instead of buying books, to write books and to sell books, instead of um, taking courses, to, to, to make courses for other people, instead of borrowing money, instead to, to, uh, to lend it, to find ways of fast tracking their performance, fast tracking their success, so that they can enjoy every single day of their lives. And as I said, to live every single day as if it's a Saturday and not to um, give up the Monday to Friday by working and then all of a sudden investing and making the most of their weekend. So uh, the author here encourages us to not stop learning, to take risks and to make um, the most of every opportunity, make most of every day, especially when you're young. Because he says that before you're 25, around about that time of your life, is a sweet spot. Before you're 25 is where you hit your highest and maximum horsepower in terms of what you can do and how you can do it. And the choices that you make uh, when you're under 30 are the choices that still will be felt in your later days. And those choices will either, either lead to positive or negative consequences. Um, the choices that you make when you're young will build the biggest branches in your life, will create the greatest opportunities, according to the author. And therefore, we need to be very, very vigilant, very prudent with the decisions that we make uh, early in our lives because they're going to put us on the right path and they're going to create the biggest and greatest opportunity for us as the author reminds us of and tells us basically says that the strongest branches the biggest branches are created when we're in our mid 20s to mid 30s so they're the times of our lives that we need to make the most of the time and not to waste it. Because as we said, time is the most valuable thing in our lives. Um, the most valuable asset that we have. And it's when we have time and we have the least distractions that we can make the best inroads into wealth creation. Uh, the author also calls to action and basically says to not fear failure um, and to try and fail fast, fail often and use failure in order to grow and develop and make the most of our lives. Um, the author also invites us in those early years not to waste our life just seeking pleasures not to waste our time, but to invest our time by taking more swings at the ball, by striking out more often, by leveraging OPE, by having a crack at life. When I was at IBM, I remember my manager telling me that there was a, a rule that he lived by and it's called the 30-year rule. And the 30-year rule basically says that if you haven't achieved the key things that you want to achieve in your life by the time you're 30, if you're not married by the time you're 30, if you haven't started a family by the time you're 30, if you're not managing a team at work by the time you're 30, if you haven't kicked some of the major goals by the time you're 30, then chances are 
that you may never will because life will get in the way things will happen you may have health challenges you may have relationship challenges you may have a number of different things that occur in your life that will stop you from achieving the things that you're destined to achieve we all have a calling we all have callings and we mustn't leave it for too long because we lose horsepower we run out of steam we run out of network we, we run out of road um, so the call to action is do whatever you have to do as early and as as um, urgently as you can in life we need to have a sense of urgency just like this river has a sense of urgency has an energy as a flow we too need to um, to take advantage of it as early as we can in life when our parents are young when we've got our grandparents around us when our siblings are around us when our friends are around us to harness that energy and that power so i remember when i was young with my young family i used to tell my children at little athletics whenever you're racing get in front and stay in front and the same message comes from this book there are fast ways to achieve things in life you don't always have to take the shortcut you don't always have to blow all your money and just seek enjoyment now there's a fine line there's a fine balance between uh, spending too much investing too much going too slow or going too fast each of us will have our own recipe the ingredients will pop up from time to time and we need to make the most of it as and when it presents itself so thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am club I hope you can hear me because the torrent here is just deafening the river is flowing it's just bursting its banks at different points there is flooding all around Sydney but it has its beauty it has its lesson and uh, there's a calling for each and every one of us to try and find the shortcuts to use OPE now there are people out there who have the smarts there are people out there who know how to get things done quickly, effectively and efficiently. We need to tap into their source. We need to use and leverage their, their experiences so that we don't have to take the long road all the time. We don't have to take all the unnecessary risks. We can leverage, we can use, we can get pulled along in their channel along the river we can swim with the rip not against the rip we can swim across the rip but we can get to where we want to get to by making the most of the um the opportunities that present themselves anyway take care yasas i'm off the fellowship now and we'll chat, chat again shortly from a different place from a different location where we can uh, live, learn and pass it on and um, be partners in each other's growth and development. Yasas, take care and bye for now.